What's going on guys? So today I'm actually testing out some different discs to check to make sure they're authentic and not counterfeit. And I'm going to share with you some tests that you can run yourself as well to kind of follow along. So one of these tools and one of the most important ones is F3 for Linux. Fight, flash, fraud. That's what the F3, so it's F times 3. Three Fs, fight, flash, fraud, stands for. Now, what this does is it allows you to check the true capacity. Now, one of the common things when you get a counterfeit disk is you're going to think it has the right capacity. Now, how do they fool you? Well, what they do is they actually put hacked firmware on it so that it actually appears to be the right capacity. But in fact, it's usually maybe a quarter or at most half the capacity. And if they're a really nice counterfeiter, they might give you three quarters. But either way, it's going to be a bad quality disc. And there's a ton of horrible quality discs out there. For example, there are very cheap ones like this, which are not actually, um, they're not actually discs that are brand name. These are kind of off-brand ones. Now, how you're going to tell, I'm going to show you a couple different things and tricks today. We're going to go over some of the things that I'm using today, which is F3 is one of those apps. Now, what you'll want to do to use F3, what you're going to do is first plug in the USB stick of choice, whatever flash memory device it is. In this case, it's a SanDisk. So you'll plug this in, and then what you'll do is you'll open up Gparted. And what you'll do then is you'll go up here. I don't have it plugged in right now, but if I plugged it in, it would show up as slash DV slash SDB. Well, anyway, you want to make sure you select the right disk because you don't want to format your main install, of course. So do not use SDA. Uh, so once you select your USB stick from this drop-down menu, one way is to check the size, see if it matches. This is obviously my main disk. It's 931 meg gigabytes. Uh, this is a 32 or so gigabyte drive, so I would pick that. Then what I would do is create an EXT4 file system on this, and I could do that. I'm not actually going to do that because my only disk is my main disk, but I would basically select the disk for the USB stick, and then I would right-click, and I would hit format to, and then ext4, and then I would hit the check mark to apply it. Just make sure you're 100% certain that you're not selecting your main install disk. Now, after you've done that, what you can do next is mount that disk. So you'll use the mount command. So for example, I would do mount slash dev slash whatever this disk is, and then the directory I want to mount it to. For example, slash mnt is one very common location to mount a disk to. Now after I've mounted that disk, I will have a workspace with which we can use the F3 command to do our tests. And we're gonna be checking for full capacity. And so what I would do, and I'll just show you some of what I was working on earlier, is there's a command that is called F3 write. And this comes on the F3 package. So when you install apt install F3, you're going to have F3 write and you're also going to get F3 read there. So what I'm doing is I'm actually working on the slash MNT slash disk, which is where I mounted this device to. So after I've created a partition that uses the entire disk space, that's very important. You need it to use the entire disk space because otherwise, how are you going to check the full capacity? Because you're going to need to fill in the whole disk. This can be a time consuming process, especially if you have a larger disk. But this is the most reliable way to check the true capacity because the hacked firmware, most of the time, it shows a false capacity. And so to check that capacity, and then we're going to talk about read and write speeds after that. So after that, you're going to use F3 write and then the location where you mounted your USB stick, the entire disk, not just a partial partition. You need that partition to take up the entire disk. And then you'll do F3 write and then just the location. Don't mind this. This S flag was something I had to pick up where I left off, so don't mind that. Now, if you do get disconnected from your disk, 
and you only have so many files, you can use this S flag to pick up where you left off because my USB cord got disconnected at the time. My USB stick got disconnected when I was doing this the first run. And so what I did was I used the S flag to pick up at 567. And what these are are one gigabyte files. And so what it is is it's creating one gigabyte files, creating files, each one's a gigabyte, and it does that until it fills out the entire disk or gets an error or something else like that. And then after that, we have to use F3 read to then read all of these files that were created. And this is to t check the true capacity of a disk because there's so many counterfeits out there and you're not gonna know it right away unless you know how to use these tools or you have some other tool to help you with this. But this is the way to do it on the Linux operating system for the most part. This is the way I've always done it. Uh, and then you're gonna use F3 read and then that same location. So the F3 write creates those gigabyte files till it fills out the disk showing how much disk space it's has available to fill out. Then the F3 read attempts to read those one gigabyte files to ensure they're really there instead of just moving around. So that is how the F3 app works. That is one way. And they also offer another way that you can do a more quick test, but it's not quite as reliable. So a quick capacity test with F3 probe. So that also comes with the F3 uh, application. Now keep in mind it is destructive so you don't want to do this as it says it will destroy your previously stored data. So in this case you're not going to need to mount it or anything. This is a much quicker way to just do a quick checkup uh, on a disk that you have. You can do F3 probe, destructive, and then the disk location not mounted. So I hope this wasn't confusing at all. Uh, make sure you can leave a comment if you want. I'm going to talk about read and write speeds next. So another way you could check the read and write speeds. So as we know, or at least as I know, a lot of counterfeits are very crappy. They don't have the accurate read and write speeds. That's another way you can detect a counterfeit. If it's not even close to the read and write speed that a said disk is meant to take or offer, then you may have, or you pretty much do have, a fake disk. Now, how are you going to check the read and write speed? At least, how are you going to do that accurately? Well, we're going to use the handy old DD command here, and I'll show you right here. So in this case, what I have done is I've actually installed a Linux operating system on the disk, and then I boot into that. So if you have a USB stick, in our case, you flash a live Linux, or, or not a live Linux, but in a, a in Linux bootable installation. So you boot to that because you want it to be the read and write you know, on the disk and uh, you'll boot to that Linux operating system and then what you'll do is you'll use the dd command and here that's what we're doing. So the dd if equals slash dev slash zero the if equals symbolizes input file equals the of equals or the output file equals that's what that stands for uh, of is output file so it's taking dd command takes this as its input and it sends it to this as the output. So in my case, it's taking slash dev slash zero into this file in this command. And then it uses the size over here and then it is showing the speed right here of it writing to that temp file. Then in this case, so that basically is a write test here. And then down here, I'm doing a more of a read test here because what I'm doing is I'm actually taking the file that we just wrote to and created, and I'm taking that as the input in the if equals on this dd command. And I'm sending it to slash dev slash null, which is basically into the bottomless abyss, which is basically sending it absolutely nowhere. So what this does is it doesn't actually write to your disk so it just sends it out into the void. Uh, so you're not going to use up disk space by doing this endlessly if you were to run, say, a larger command. Uh, and then it just checks that as well. So it's checking that uh, reading of this file, and you can see the read speed here. But it's not entirely accurate. You need to, you know reset and get the buffer off it so you want it to be a direct read from disk so uh, what you do here is use the sysctl command the w flag and then vm.drop caches3 uh, 
And then what you're going to do after you run that is you'll use input file is that temp file we created of the zeros and then uh, output file again is going to be slash dev slash null. And you can use these exact same file names on your command process. So remember, in this case, I'm actually running off the USB stick and I'm checking its speed to read and write. And so at this point, since we're not using the buffer, uh, we're actually going to be reading directly from that disk from the temp file on the disk. And then it shows a more accurate right here, which is 439 megabytes per second. Um, and that is that particular option for a set of commands that you could use, for example, to check read and write speed. Now, another option here is we have HD Parm here. Now, I've done this. This is another test on another random disk. Um, and then you can use this command as well. So that's another thing you could do to check your read, your disk read speeds. And what you really want to do is ideally you want it to match up with whatever that brand name is and that exact model of disk. Not just the brand name, but the model of disk itself. Because each different model is going to have a different read and write speed. So you want it to be, you know, find out. Uh, obviously it may not be 100% what it says on the box, but as long as it's somewhat close, uh, you should be good to go. Now, another test. Now this is the really easy way. If you found this confusing and you just think, man, I wish it was quicker than that. Well, there is another way to check if you have an authentic SAN disk. And how you'll do that is you'll basically tear the disk open. And that's exactly what I've done. Uh, so along this crack here, you can actually tear it apart and uh, you'll see something that looks similar to this. Now, what's nice about the sand disks, and this isn't the case with other brands, but in this particular sand disk brand of USB stick, you will always have a sand disk chip on it. So that's a really quick way you can check if it's an authentic sand disk. So if you're getting a sand disk USB, go ahead and pop it open and see if you have a real sand disk chip. And you should be able to find pictures of that. And maybe I'll post one uh, when I find the sand disk that I tore open not too long ago. So I, got, I hope you guys found this helpful. If you're confused by this, you know, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, make sure to share the video so people can learn how not to get ripped off with USB sticks. Because everyone who shares them, you know, that is what, you know, makes it worth it. I really appreciate your guys' support. I'll see you guys soon in another video on Linux tech, how to protect your security and privacy.